Hey, this is Joel Duff. Welcome back to the channel. Real quick episode of Critiquing Young Earth Creationism today. I saw this article on the front page of Creation Ministries International uh, just yesterday, and it references a place that I'm quite fond of and have talked about just recently on this channel. It's about White Sands National Park and the human footprints that have been found there. Well, not just human footprints from yesterday, but human footprints from thousands of years ago, or potentially over 20,000 years ago. And that is the question that's raised in this particular article. Now, from a young earth creationist perspective, of course, these can't be more than 4,350 years old, but we're going to look at some carbon dating and optical simulated luminescence dating in order to assess the dates of these preserved footprints for us. Not just preserved footprints of human beings, but also of elephants and sloths and a number of other Ice Age animals. Oh, Ice Age, that's part of the clue as to the environment of this particular location, the time when these footprints were laid down. So let's take a quick look at this article, Equivocal Carbon Dating of Ancient Footprints in Tularosa Basin, New Mexico by Andrew Sibley, who's been writing a fair amount for Creation Ministries International lately, and I've just recently read that he's been uh, he's hired as a full-time uh, person for this particular ministry. Now, the emphasis of this particular article is going to be, oh, look, scientists can't get their dating right. You know, one group says that these footprints are this age, another group says they're a different age. Eh, we can't trust dating because nobody can agree to the dates. Okay, we don't need to read this whole article. Let's just hit the highlights, and they've highlighted the most important parts for us, right? Here's this quote from the article. Previously assigned radiometric dates of the footprints conflict with previous understanding of human occupation in North America based on genetic reconstruction studies. What they're going to tell us is that, A, there's been a group of scientists that have looked at these particular footprints, and they have dated them to be somewhere between 13 and 15,000 years old, which kind of fits the consensus view of when the first peoples came to North America, uh, like Clovis culture and so forth. And so this would kind of match what we already knew about the first peoples in North America. And everyone assumed that these footprints are fairly old because they are found uh, in uh, contiguous with sloths and mammoths, right? So a number of different Ice Age animals that have gone extinct quite a while back. Um, but there's another group uh, that has been studying these particular fossils with a different dating method, and they came up with 21, I think it's 21 to 23,000 years old. And that made headlines, all right? And the reason it made headlines is because it does, it does set itself apart from the conventional understanding of, or our best understanding to this date, of the first peoples that peopled North America. Uh, by quite a few thousand years, right? You know, this is adding six or seven, maybe even 8,000 more years to the, the timeline of the habitation uh, by people of North America. And so this little quote here is suggesting that that particular date is conflicting with the general understanding based on genetic reconstruction studies. That would be looking at uh, people that are alive today, well, as well as some ancient DNA and then extrapolating back when uh, individuals must have come here based on the amount of genetic diversity uh, that's found in North America. Well, oh, I should have scrolled down and shown you the pictures because these are some of the most fantastic uh, footprint, you know, preserved footprints that, that we have uh, really anywhere on earth. Um, there's uh, the Laoti uh, footprints are pretty amazing and those are in volcanic ash. This is in some kind of like a silica, silicate uh, gypsum layer would have been on a wide like floodplain, right? Probably like uh, just like today, you get an influx of water in the springtime, right? From rain and melting snow, which then creates these very thin, right? Very shallow, wide lakes. And then as that lake dries out, you have a huge mud flat. And then people and other animals walked across that particular mud flat and left their footprints. And then they dried, right? Hardened. Uh, and then, once again, the next spring, you have another influx of rapid uh, water influx, which brought a lot of sediment with it, fills up the footprints, and then preserves them. And so that's where you get this, this amazing uh, preservation. They're, in this picture, you'd think they're just right there on the surface. It almost looks like they were made yesterday. 
but clearly they're many thousands of years old and I'm going to show you the publication. I've showed it to you if you've watched any of my other video, well, the particular video I'm talking about, which I'll link to this, to this one, but I'm going to, we're just going to go back to that paper because it's so fantastic. It's so cool to see uh, the layers that these particular uh, fossils are in. Um, so what else do we need to get here? These footprints recently have been conventionally dated to 23 to 21,000 years before present, which researchers believe correlates with the period of the Ice Age in North America, really the peak of the Ice Age, rather than sort of the waning ladder steps of the Ice Age. All right, they've used a number of methods, uh, uranium thorium, which isn't precise enough to really nail down the time, kind of gives an age range between 100,000 and 25,000 years, but then they kind of narrow it down to maybe 25,000 to 4,000 years. Uh, so that's a pretty wide range. And then within that wide range, you have some carbon-14 dating that's been done by two different groups that got dates that are close to 10,000 years apart, which is a pretty significant difference between the two. As a result of this ancient time frame, scientists proposed that humans had colonized North America from Asia during the last glacial maximum, which is earlier than the standard narrative allows. Well, I'm not sure I'd use the word allows. I mean, it's just that would be earlier than the standard current narrative or current consensus view. Uh, and so it suggests that that consensus view potentially could be wrong based on this data. The official narrative is that human settlers had not arrived in this part. Official narrative. I mean, the official narrative is just the consensus view of the current data that from other sites that we know about that have been dated. And so the oldest ones we have are in that range of 13,000 to, there's a few that others that have suggested maybe 18,000. Um, but now we're saying that they must have arriven, arrived in North America before 20,000 years. This estimate has been determined through studies of ancient DNA, human fossils, together with assumed rates of genetic change, footprints are older, it would invalidate such genetic reconstructions. So here you, here you had this one report, and I remember this. I, I remember hearing about these reports, and then there was a further uh, group that came along and said, no, you know, we're not so sure, All right? They, they provided a contrary view to this other view of them being much older than we thought. Uh, they then looked at seeds of a particular plant that were embedded in, in the sediments along with the, so, you know, person stepped on this mud and in that compacted mud, they pulled out little seeds uh, and carbon-14 dated them, and they got more in the 15 to 13,000 range, right? Which, as they said, point out here, which is more in accord with the standard model when humans were supposed to have arrived in North America, right? They, and they note that these researchers, these researchers then called for further studies, included carbon dating of biological merit material from atmospheric sources, an optically simulated luminescence dating of sediment, uh, lake sediment quartz. Okay, so now the whole purpose of this Creation Ministries International article is to once again cast doubt on uh, modern dating methods and the ages of these particular footprints as being older than 4,000 years old. And they do so by pointing out that the example shows that radiometric dating can give very different results right? What, who, who can we trust? What can we trust? There's, these are different results. And the selection of dating preferences is driven by the needs of, sele of the secular narrative. Now, I mean, you're saying, okay, well, with the secular narrative, the consensus view of conventional biologists, paleontologists, and those who research this type of stuff that have uh, from, again, I'm going to stress, the current available data set concluded that 13 to 15,000 years old would be sort of the time that if you found footprints, you would look at them and go like, probably these are like the max age of 15,000. Well, then why date them at all, right? Scientists came along and, and tried to figure out the dates and found out potentially they're a lot older. That's a pretty strong claim given the lack of prior evidence that humans have been around for longer than that. And therefore, a single data point like this, you know, should be questioned. It should be further tested. Right? That's why another group did some testing of that, and they got different results, which suggested that maybe this older data is, you know, or this older date is incorrect. In other words, it's an example of the need to fit the data to the to protect the official model. So in their in their minds, what's happened here is 
Well, that ruffled some feathers, right? You can't say 23,000 years old. That doesn't fit the official narrative. And so therefore, somebody else had to look at this and massage the data somehow or make sure that they calculated the, the, the dates in such a way that it came out closer to the conventional view because, you know, we don't, up, we don't want to upset the apple cart. We can't go against the conventional view. Um, well, carbon dating can be, now, now note these next couple sentences. While carbon dating can be fairly accurate for dating trees where the carbon can be taken from the atmosphere, much larger errors arise when water is involved. For example, with the marine reserve, reservoir effect and the hard water effect. All right, had this hard water effect that resulted in a incorrect date being applied. Now, what I find fascinating about this, uh, you know, here we are, we're sitting, you know, they're, they're claiming that uh, scientists are, are trying to fudge the data, trying to make sure that they can squeeze it into the, the timeline that they expect. But then they go ahead and admit that carbon dating can be accurate if things come from the atmosphere, but large errors arrive, arise when water's involved. And that's what we have here. We have a lake, right? We have infusion of materials into uh, organic material. And so confusing the timeline potentially. And so this would be why different scientists actually plucking out different organic bits in order to do uh, the dating could potentially get different results. Um, and so they're talking about how, oh, well, you can't trust the dates because they get different dates. But there are reasons why we get different dates. But this is why we do multiple different dating techniques where possible. Uh, and we analyze other people's, other researchers' data, and we critique it, and we re-examine it. Uh, all of this in order to parse out which which of these two different dates will eventually have more support. So at present, if there's two groups that have two different dates and they've both done them in maybe appropriate fashions, but with different materials, um, what needs to be more tests done? And maybe the weight of the evidence will fall in toward one group versus the other group or one date versus the other date. In fact, that is what's been done because that's the paper I'm going to show you. So now this paper came out in, I forgot to point out, uh, this paper was in the journal Creation, even though it was released yesterday on the front page of Answers and uh, Answers and Genesis, Creation Ministries International. Uh, this was actually published April 23 in their, in their research journal. And that's important because the paper I'm going to show you is from 2024. And see how they said that... Um, uh, they said the researchers called for further studies, including carbon dating of biological material from atmospheric sources rather than infused with water, but something that you could be more sure that they derive their carbon from the atmosphere and it's going to be less contaminated, then you're going to get a more accurate result, right? These researchers recognize that what they did was the simplest type of method they could do the first sort of the first step, the first try to get a date. Uh, and but they when they after they got the dates they're like well here's potential problems with our own research and here's what you could do to improve that research right be more careful with the carbon 14 data find some additional sources to date and also do another form of dating which is independent of carbon 14 which is uh, OSL um, optically simulated uh, luminescence dating uh, of the of the quartz which would be basically think of that as the sand grains. Uh, in, in in mixed in into the mud material or lake material. All right, and then let's go down to the end here. While these researchers seek to hold the standard model of migration, their work highlights just how uncertain dating methods can be, and it's a serious challenge to the wider secular narrative. Oh, we got to read that last line because this is going to tell you how Croatian scientists interpret this particular data. Well, like what do they do? Hey, thirteen to fifteen thousand or twenty to twenty-one thousand. Which one is it? Well, creation scientists would interpret the human footprint data of that of post-Babel dispersion, where they're saying that people, Noah's family, got off the ark, and eventually people congregated in Babel in the Middle East and Levant region. And then from there, they were scattered right across the earth. Well, Babel is thought to have occurred a couple hundred years after the flood. And so that would put you at around 4,100 or 4,000 years ago. Uh, and then from there, they would have to migrate all the way to North America. 
they have to get up all the way over the bearing um the land bridge right between alaska and siberia they have to get up there pretty quick because the ice age is you know starting to wane and come to end the biblical ice age and therefore the ocean levels are rising rather rapidly and they're eventually going to cover that land bridge so they leave Babel and they, you know, take a, make a beeline for um, the Bering Strait. And some of them cross over that into North America. They had to make it all the way down to New Mexico or what is today New Mexico. And they have to live on the shore of this, uh, this, this uh, playa, right? This, this flat uh, lake, all right? And they have to leave their footprints. In addition to that, sloths and mammoths and all these other animals also has to have, have gotten to this place at that time. Uh, okay, so post babel dispersion of people from the Middle East during the later stages of the Ice Age with a time frame around 4,000 years before present. So in their um, chronology, right, the max age of these footprints would be 4,000 years old. So keep that in mind. Let's go look at the paper from 2024 that analyzes the dates of these footprints. So they're going to do another analysis. Right. They've taken on the challenge of here's two different analyses by two different sets of researchers that are in conflict with each other. And they're going to try to resolve that conflict by doing a number of additional analyses and see which one uh, which one they're more similar to. Let's go take a look at that paper. All right. Here we are. Independent age estimates resolve the controversy. All right, so you know, they're claiming they've resolved this controversy, which this creation uh, science article uh, is talking about the controversy. Now, again, I want to be fair. They wrote that paper and published it prior to this particular article coming out. Um, independent ages estimates revolve, resolve the controversy about ancient human footprints in the white sands. And this was in one of the top journals in the world in science. Human footprints at White Sands National Park reportedly date to between 23,000 and 21,000 years ago, according to radiocarbon dating of seeds from the aquatic plant uh, Rupia. These ages remain controversial because of the potential old carbon reserve effect that could compromise their accuracy. Right, You're saying like, yes, there's this known problem with carbon-14 dating in this particular environment, in a lake environment. Uh, and so that was a known problem. And those ages, those dates were quite old. So potentially those older dates of 20-some thousand years could be wrong. We're going to do a reanalysis of that and reassess that. We present new calibrated carbon-14 ages of terrestrial pollen collected from the same stratigraphic horizons as those of the rupia seeds. And it was the rupia seeds that were thought to have been contaminated in such a way that they could have yielded an older age, could have yielded an older age. At least that's what other people were claiming. They also derived optically simulated luminescence ages, right, from the sediments from which the human footprints were found. So those are going to be used to verify the seed ages. All right, so we've got pollen, we'll have seeds, and we'll have OSL. Uh, and OSL is completely independent of the carbon-14 dating. So if you get the same ages with the OSL dating as the carbon-14 dating, that should give you more confidence that, you know, that, that your dates are correct for the carbon-14 dating. Right? Even if you doubt the optical, the OSL dating, if you get the same age as well, then it would be a coincidence if they both came out the same way and neither of them were like valid techniques. But you might be wondering, what is optically simulated luminescence? Um, well, it's a technique used you know, to date geological and archaeological materials because it's, it's dating the, the, uh, the minerals, not organic material. So when minerals like quartz or feldspar, you know, when they get buried, so they're at the surface and then they get buried and covered over after they're no longer able to receive UV light and light from the sun, right? They start to accumulate energy in the crystals themselves because of natural radiation in the ground. That radiation it builds up products inside these crystals. Now, when light actually strikes these again, so if you were to unbury the, this rock and expose these crystals to the light, the energy of that light actually will cause uh, that energy to be released as light. That's the luminescence part, right? These crystals will actually luminesce 
at such low amounts that you wouldn't be able to see them with your eye, but with very high precision instruments, we can actually see that luminescence, right? We can measure that luminescence, right? So by measuring the amount of light uh, emitted when the materials are stimulated, optically stimulated, therefore the optically stimulated luminescence of the name of this particular dating method, um, by intentionally removing crystals from places that were buried. So they had to go to these places where there's footprints uh, and they have to get a layer of sediment that's right next to them and make sure that they don't expose it to the sunlight, right? So you take a block of this material and then in the dark, you're gonna basically crack that open and then you're going to intentionally stimulate it, all right? With light yourself, you know how much energy you're gonna expose it to. And then by measuring the amount of light that's emitted from those molecule you know, from those crystals um you can determine the last time the material was exposed to the sunlight so this makes osl a tool for dating sediments and artifacts that have been shielded from the light for some period of time either from years to hundreds or even hundreds of thousands of years that's sort of the range that it can have. the longer the 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 materials have not been exposed to light the more energy that they've built up. And so there's a formula you use to determine like if there's a whole lot of bioluminescence, right, emitted from this, then they've been buried for a very long time. And so they use this to determine the OSL dates of the sediments that the footprints are in. So again, I wanna emphasize this is an independent form of dating. The dates derived from this have nothing to do with the carbon-14 dates. And so it's an independent measure of the dates. The results show that the chronological framework originally established for the White Sands footprints is robust and reaffirm that humans were present in North America during the last glacial maximum, right? The very first study that found that these dates are, that these footprints are very old is confirmed by both of these forms of analysis. Um, now, here's, here's one of the things I wanted to show you from this article. Uh, because it, it, we're doing a critique in creationism. And, and the thing here is creationists are ca trying to cast doubt on the, the ages of these fossils. I would say that even if the fossils were um, inaccurately dated, even the young earth creationists agree that these have to be quite old. Um, but what they don't talk about is here's some of these footprints. Now you're seeing them in a different way than you saw in that picture that was included in the young earth creationist article. Here we have some footprints that look like they're on the surface. They're actually not. This has actually been, um, some material has been removed from the top surface. There are some areas where they're actually exposed at the surface. That's how we know the footprints are there. And then we have removed more surface area in order to expose even more footprints. But it's not all on one layer. You see how there's footprints here. There's some footprints uh, over here on a lower layer. Now you have to you have to remove another layer, which you can think of as either one season or probably more, many more seasons of inundation, laying down small, thin layers of sediment. Uh, and then so there was another time further in the past in which some people walked this direction. And then you dig down and you find out there's a, another layer you could look at. And there are footprints there. These are harder to see, but there are two footprints here. And then you dig farther down, and now you're looking at, you, you've dug down a foot and a half at least, uh, representing a whole bunch of layers of sediments. And there are clear footprints down here. So let's, let's scroll down a little farther. Here's a graphical representation of the layers. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different layers just from this one small area that have footprints on them. And this thing right up here is actually an elephant footprint, right? So after all seven of these were laid down in even a layer above that, then at this particular location, an elephant walked by, right? And elephants have been extinct in North America for a long time, all right? For thousands of years. Um, and so then we have the seed ages over here. And so they have taken seeds out of sediment and they very carefully uh, have extracted uh, internal uh, organic material from those seeds and they've carbon dated it 
and you can see the carbon dates over here. And what's what you should note is that these carbon dates um, are, oh, these are pollen ages and seed ages. And the seed ages, you have these upper seeds here, 21,130 years old, right? 21,150 years old. Down here, we're getting to 22,000. Down here, we're getting to 22,870. So we have a span of a little over a thousand years for the carbon 14 dating. You know, there's error ranges here. These aren't perfect. Obviously, this footprint was laid down before this other one up here. So even though the date is older for this footprint than this one, it's within the range of variability. It's going to be range of variability. Um, but the overall trend is older at the bottom, moving toward younger. And the oldest ones still sit far above the actual oldest footprint. They just didn't have any organic material to test to find out what the age of that oldest footprint is. So 22.87 plus or minus 0.3. So that's why they're saying you know, like this oldest one might be in the range of around 23,000 years old. And then you come over to pollen, right? The pollen ages. And they're getting ages of 23,000, 22, 26. But this is actually has a much broader uh, um, error range. Uh, you have a very small amount of material. So you have a, you kind of have a higher error rate with that stuff. But the idea is with pollen versus seeds from different plants, organic material, but in the same layer, you're getting ages that are 22, 23,000 years, somewhere between 21 and 23,000 years. Uh, and so down here, they're just showing where they did. Oh, and then there's the optical, right? Uh, optical simulated luminescence uh, dates. And those were taken from below um, these layers that had the footprints in it. So they've taken plugs of material out. So these have not been exposed to light for a long period of time. And they're going to find out how long. All right. So then you see this, uh, this square right here that's inside of this darkened area. Uh, darkened because that wasn't that wasn't uh, excavated uh, to look for footprints. So they cored into that, right? And then pull the core out and make sure they don't expose it to the light, take it to the lab, and then they do the OSL analysis on it to figure out the age of that. What's the age? What's the OSL age? Right? 21.5 plus or minus 1.9. It has a, a, a wider uh, range, right, of confidence. Um, so the dates are somewhere between 20,000 and close to 23,000. Well, that fits in the range of the carbon-14 dated stuff. So here the OSL and the carbon-14 dates both line up. They give the same general range within a thousand years of each other. Uh, and these analyses are separate from the original analysis that was done which gave a 21,000 year old age as well from some of these footprints. So all of this lends a lot more support to this older age. And the conclusion of this paper is that yes, like people were here that long ago. And that wasn't what we had originally thought based on a number of other lines of evidence. But in those cases, many times it's like, you know, we didn't have any evidence that, that anything was, was older. Uh, and so now that does cause some rethink about um, the peoplings of North America. You know, th you know, this creationist article wants to makes it sound like this is controversial stuff. And it's all it is, is this is how science works. That's what this is. This is just, hey, you know, when we first ex found something, we do an initial analysis. And we put it together with all the other observations we have. I mean, really, the original paper was like, look at these footprints. Like, you know, we're, we're measuring the feet, the, the toes, and like how they might have walked and like what the average, you know, height of these individuals are based on the gait of the, the, the footprints and so forth, right? And then, well, we, of course, we're interested in the age. Well, we got a preliminary age, right? We, we took some samples from there. We sent them to a lab and they sent us back, you know, this, this particular age. And then somebody else is like, wow, you know, that that's, you know, and they reported that, right? And it was like, whoa, that's like a really old age. I wasn't really surprised. I wasn't really expecting that because we don't know of any other sites, um, you know, in North America. There's actually some South American sites that are potentially dated fairly old too, um, that we've known about. And, but in North America, it's like, yeah, let's, that's, 
But like, that's a lot. So other people came along and did further analysis. And in a way, they're skeptics. And they're saying, you know, there are reasons why you could have gotten an older age, right? There are different kinds of contamination. There are different, you know, they had a rationale for why the dates might have been older, right? So now we have additional analysis that's been done. And in this case, the focus is on the dating. Like, okay, we're going to really hunker down here and get the dates. And so we're going to do a number of different methods, right? And we're going to consider a lot of different variables, right? And we're going to collect more samples, right? And we're going to pool a bunch of samples. And we're looking at pollen now, we're looking at new seeds, and we're looking at OSL dating. Uh, and we're going to take all of that and reassess. And all the dates from that analysis all point in one direction. So now the story is very different than it originally was. It was like, well, you know, it could be this or it could be that. We have some interesting contradictory data. Now we have most of the data pointing in a particular direction and the day and the research will continue. Right? More footsteps will be found. Maybe they'll be found even deeper here. And there might be older footprints, in which case the dates will get older. And maybe a reanalysis of these dates will be done somewhat. I think that uh, this particular paper is has convinced most people that, in fact, people have been around a lot longer than we thought in North America. Again, this particular figure is interesting to me because it suggests that people have been at this particular site for a long period of time. Now, even if young Earth creationists don't believe in the, the, the dating here that covers 1,500 years or so, maybe even 2,000 years, that's a long time for people to be at this particular site, walking across this particular area. Um, they can't have 2,000 years of this happening, right? Because all of this stuff had to have happened right after the Ice Age. This had to have been a habitable area where people actually wanted to be, and there had to be mud flats at this particular spot. Now, yes, it does, it does get wet in this area, but the type of habitat that's a, that's at White Sands now is not a place where you would want to be a sort of hunter gatherer or even or definitely not settling down and doing some kind of agriculture. All right. That's just as not an environment that would be friendly for that today. So uh, and as far as we can tell, that habitat has been that, you know, the way White Sands is today has been like that for thousands and thousands of years, like 10,000 years or more. But for young earth creationists, yeah, at least a couple thousand years because we have plenty of other evidence that this location has been very, very dry for a long period of time, not least of which is the production of the white sands, right? the national park itself with enormous amounts of silica sand, which has piled up. That has taken a long, I mean, that's been there ever since people have come there and made any kind of notes about what they saw. Right. And so, not so it's been there that long and then it had to have formed and it had to have formed from the erosion of places like this because this is the material that's eroding that's producing the white sands mounds right the sand dunes right and it's because of the erosion of this material that it's eroded down to the point where we're seeing those human footprints so that means there had to have been a lake there people were there it was habitable 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 people live there left their footprints there they continued to have sediments pile up and they piled up higher and higher and higher well above this particular point and then sometime later in time erosion began which then created the white sands um sand dunes right that is a lot of things that had to happen within for the young earth creationist a very 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 short period of time well Wow, I'm just looking at my uh, clock here and it's saying that I've been talking for 45 minutes. Certainly didn't expect to go that long. Uh, but, you know, this is really fun for me. So I'm trying out a new mic. Sure hope it worked. I don't want to have to do this again, although it will be shorter if I do it again. <laughs> no doubt about that. <laughs> so, um, so trying out some new equipment um, and a little bit of new formatting and we'll see how this goes. Yeah, and well, in case you couldn't read it, I got my Cleveland Cavaliers uh, basketball shirt on, and actually, it's the shirt that uh, my yeah that we got when we went to the playoff game just two days ago uh, with the Orlando Magic. I don't think anybody was really expecting the Cavs to win, and so it, I I just you know at the very last minute 
told my son, hey, let's just drive up there and, you know, we'll see if we get close, if we can uh, grab a couple tickets cheap. And we did. So it was a fun game. It was a fun game. And yeah, they somehow won it. Okay, that's it. I'm out of here. I've got to do another recording of a what I promise will be a shorter video than this one, especially since it's um, eh, it's midnight my time, so I can't stay up too much later. I'm too old to be uh, up this late. All right. Bye.